This is Tabletop Deathmatch, a competition to find the next great tabletop game. It was entertaining. I don't think I would buy this game. Everything sort of flowed logically. Game designers from all over the country sent their prototypes to us at Cards Against Humanity. We picked eight finalists, and now we're bringing them to Gen Con, the biggest tabletop gaming convention in the world, where they're going to pitch their prototypes to our panel of industry-leading judges. One game will win a first printing paid for by Cards Against Humanity and be crowned the winner of Tabletop Deathmatch. I'm feeling all right. Uh, you know, it's, it's been a, a busy <laughs> convention met all kinds of people and I enjoyed every minute of it so I'm <laughs> a little tired uh, but uh, I'm excited and a little nervous for sure. I hope the judging will go well. I mean uh, I'm a little nervous because you know uh, it's a little intimidating of course but uh, I know it's gonna be a great time and I know they'll be open to to learn more about my game and, and I'm, uh, I'm excited. Hey Thomas, thank you so much for coming to show us Shut Up and Take My Money. We're really excited to see the game. Thank you. Can you give us the really brief pitch of the game? Uh, Shut Up and Take My Money is a game about uh, crowdfunding, in which players combine cards to create games that they'll then pitch to the other players to earn fame. Very cool. Well, let me uh, introduce you to our judges. We have Paul Peterson, the creator of Smash Up and Guillotine, Annalisa Delfell, the retail manager of Card Kingdom, Rodney Thompson, creator of Lords of Waterdeep and Jetpack Enthusiast, Mike Selinker, creator of the Pathfinder Adventure Card Game, Luke Crane, the community manager for games at Kickstarter, and Sherry Spiro, our printer at Cards Against Humanity. Do you want to come and uh, set the game up so we can run through a few rounds? Sure. All right, let's do it. Prototype looks pretty cool. Are you happy with how it came out? Oh yeah, it's, uh, it's been a pleasure like, working with uh, Ade and Mackie. The box looks uh, awesome and I'm pretty pleased with uh, how it turned out. What was the back and forth working with them like? Did you feel like you were kind of artistically in control of, of things or were they driving the design the most? I think I um, worked more with Ade uh, at first because you know I wanted to see what he could do with my uh, the vision I had for the game. Uh, we settled for a like bold, you know, very loud uh, graphics because my first prototype had a very like Kickstarter look to it with the Kickstarter font and everything. I wanted something, you know, that pop that was very uh, cool and different, so. Well, really nicely done on the prototype. I'm gonna uh, step away and let you run a few rounds for the judges and then um, we'll be back to uh, talk about the game. Basically, Shut Up and Take My Money um, is a game about crowdfunding. As a player, you're a uh, young designer who uh, will combine cards every turn to create games and then you'll have to pitch your game and uh, then players will vote to see who earns uh, the fame uh, tokens. I was very skeptical coming into Shut Up and Take My Money. It seemed very gimmicky. Uh, it seemed maybe a little too on the nose, especially for me. Everybody gets five uh, project cards. Uh, we proceed to a draft phase. You're gonna pick the project you, you would like to keep for the, for the game and pass the the cards to the players to your left. How do we know what project we want to keep? Is it just simply preferential? Like it, yes. So there's no strategic value. You just pick uh, the one you like the most, the one you're comfortable with, the one that you think will make other uh, players laugh. I think that Thomas really has some good design instincts. He was able to identify a problem in the fact that if you're playing this game, you might not be 100% familiar with every possible genre of game. And so when you get a handful of game types and you don't recognize one of them, you can't do anything with it and you have to pitch all of these game types. So he identified a problem. Unfortunately, I think the solution he came to was one that was not very elegant and it created a lot of extra well, time at the table, but also just a lot of extra rules and design. His solution of a drafting mechanic, that's not the way I would have gone, and I think that in order to create a better experience overall, what he probably wants to do is just let you draw more cards. You'll give the shut up card to the project you like the least, and the take my money card to the project you like the most. Hmm. You get a fame token for every uh, take my money card you get. The player who has the most votes of either types also get an extra uh, token. I think every time that Thomas made a decision as to how to make the game a little less mechanical, he made it a little more complicated. And I kind of wish he hadn't done that. 
So I think that uh, I think he needs to look at his game real hard and find the more simple ways to get things like scoring and cards into people's hands and presentation of words on cards. I think there's a lot of streamlining this game could use. I am launching a limited edition tabletop RPG about police loving politically correct flying grizzly bears. Back my project now and you can get a limited edition <laughs> a limited edition maquette of, of <laughs> Uh, badgeless police officers in love with politically correct flying grizzly bears. It's very topical. It's a topical RPG. What would you say are the uh, risks and challenges of your project? <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a great question. I'll, I'll put this in the fact. Um, <laughs> fact? No, you have to have it. <laughs> I, I think that there's a, you know, I, I think to be honest, you know, there's the risk of being mauled by the grizzly bear that's on staff right. that we have uh, doing the writing for us. Um, the game experience is probably one of the most funny so far, and I, I really, you know, it was really right up my alley in the first place. Uh, this could not have been better targeted at me. Mine is a first person shooter. It's set in a dystopian atmosphere, it's competitive. And uh, basically, it's singing vampires that pop up and you shoot them. Aren't vampires immune to bullets? Well, you're not shooting bullets. You're shooting silver bullets. Aren't vampires immune to silver, silver bullets? bullets? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's werewolves. It's that's that's werewolves. That, are, uh, that, are, that have wooden stakes embedded in them. Oh, that makes sense now. Of course. That makes sense. That makes a lot more sense. I like Shut Up and Take My Money because I enjoyed putting it out there. I enjoyed expressing myself. In a, um, in a fashion that, you know, was competitive and compelling. Uh, even though, you know, there were other people who expressed themselves much better than I did. My game is a, is an historical post-apocalyptic sure. MMORPG about the hipster resistance. Sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. What's the leveling system? Are, are we grinding? Uh, no, no, grinding is so last year. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the only thing you grind in here is your own coffee that has passed through the intestines of a, of a small jungle cat. So. Well done, sir. <laughs> well done. I really enjoyed playing this game. I love the interactions with my fellow judges. This is just fun. I love how we're bouncing off of each other, the question and answers that we gave. Well, I'm proposing um, it's a psychological game. It's a psychological survival horror game. Um, that involves being in a dark forest with werewolves. And what makes this game unique and different is that you provide the forest location, we meet you there, and we provide the live werewolf. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is, I mean, there is replayability if you survive, but um, I think that's part of the appeal is that it could be the last time you ever do anything fun. What if I'm not available on the night of the full moon when you launch this? Our werewolves are specially bred. They can actually change anytime. We just prod them with an electrical stick. I was surprised that I had so much fun playing this game, but maybe for different reasons than the other judges. Um, when I had read about the game, I saw what, it, what the subject matter was, and I thought that that was going to be something way too narrow for me to enjoy. Uh, I'm proposing, shockingly, to produce a German board game about disco real estate. <laughs> sure. oh, nice. Like Studio 54? Yes, the okay. name of the game is uh, Ich bin ein John Travolta. <laughs> 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 And uh, in this game, you are constructing uh, discos in, in Germany and uh, fighting to have the most prestigious disco. Many of you will recognize this as the, uh, the, the Vegas Showdown formula. Well, this is Vegas Showdown, but for German discos. Um, at which level are vials of glitter and cocaine provided? Uh, if you actually, even at the $5 level. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so $5 and all, up, uh, all all levels beyond that. To make the experience really authentic. Well, you know, what we really want to do is reinforce theme mm -hmm. in this game so everyone gets coke. I really like the mechanic of matching two cards and making a pitch for it. I liked it the last two times I saw it in other games. So, uh, but it's, it's really fun. And now we reveal the votes. Wow. Paul gets two uh, tokens, yeah. Annalisa gets two tokens, and Rodney also gets two. Okay. You get an extra token, and you get one too. Oh, so getting shut-ups is good. Can be. Because, it, because it's your fame that it's tracking, not, okay. What gave you the idea to come up with this game? Uh, talking about Kickstarter online and complaining about 
projects that didn't make sense or late projects and um, that kind of thing. Do you, do you have any concerns about the uh, ability of this game to age well? And the reason I ask that is because you know the title of your game is a pop culture reference, the back of the box text is a pop culture reference. Do you have any concerns about what this game would look like, you know, sitting on the shelf 10 years from now? I understand that it's um, it's a game about a phenomenon that's fairly recent, uh, but um, it doesn't have that many uh, elements of the crowdfunding that you can play it in, let's say, five years or 10 years. Sure. Uh, At which know, point it would simply be a game about game design. Yes, right. about pitching games to publishers. Right. right. I think one piece of advice that I would have is to zoom back on the pop culture references just a little bit and focus in on more on the element of pitching a game. I mean, that's the core of the game, that's what you do. And honestly, it's good enough to stand on its own. All right, well, I think we've got a lot to talk about, but we're <laughs> going to um, send you off into the hallway for a few minutes and we're going to hold on to your prototype and okay. have a chat about it. No problem. Good, I think it went uh, pretty well. Uh, it was a little, you know, it was intimidating, you know, I'm, much more than I anticipated, but <laughs> I think it went well. Uh, I think you know we had a few laughs. Um, they all know each other, so they had some private jokes. It was weird having uh, you know Luke Crane on the on as a judge because he works for Kickstarter. But I think it was equally weird to have you know all these people uh, around the table that are idols of mine, basically, you know, uh, try and play the game and and give me feedback. Uh, so I feel like this is Kickstarter Inception. We have Luke, who is the community manager for games at Kickstarter, judging a game about Kickstarter in a contest that was created because we had a successful Kickstarter project that was designed with assets from the Noun Project, which was itself a Kickstarter project, with a table full of people whose careers in some part have been funded by Kickstarter projects. Wow! It's a dream within a dream within a dream. Yeah. I was worried about the subject matter of the game, being very specific and not being something that everybody would be interested in. Um, so I was actually surprised by how fun this was to play. I, I, I will admit, coming into this, I was worried this was going to be very sort of twee, like, ho ho, crowdfunding, right? But I, I, I think he avoided a lot of the, those pitfalls and really just focused on the sort of game pitch idea, which, you know, while it does share many similarities to many other games, does not feature that kind of, I, I don't know, Luke, what do you think? It's, charming like he, I, yeah it's earnest it's charming you know he thought a lot about it he like I was surprised at how straight most of the cards are yeah. it's a little more reserved than I expected expecting to be a little more wacky but I've been advocating for these you know the games that are encouraging humor to hold back and let the players be funny and uh, I felt shut up and take my money actually did a good job of that there were a lot of jokes about like oh do you want to cross promote or like you know uh, there were just all these jokes like do you guys feel like were, were was it wanting for mechanics where there were ways to respond uh, I to would each other's... I would go far the other direction yes. this game is so over designed yes. like th this is a party game this is a familiar kind of party game where you build something and everybody looks at it and votes on what you want and the the drafting is like the most uh, I understand, I mean, this, especially after his description of that his wife plays this game and she doesn't really understand all of these, that's exactly why he's done this and put it in there so that you get a lot of choice and there's a lot of text on these. Uh, I did have some problems with the drafting mechanic. I mean, I think the game could exist if you even just cut it entirely and it would make the game move faster because it takes up a lot of time at the beginning. And the double cards, like, I'm not sure what you get from this So at this all. one is, this is one I was gonna give an example of. It's an ultra-violent game about fighting. Like, the, you don't need to stack that, right? I disagree on that one. I, like, the like police procedural, this is a great card. No, no, well, there, there are well. cards that you need to write that way because you don't have a clear noun version and... and uh, but, but I mean, I'm just saying it gave me... But Hipster and Ukulele, that, that's clever that they're sort of similar, have some similarities and they're the same card, but these could just be two cards. I, and you're still... And, but there's and an economy still, there. Yeah, no, there's an economy. I like that. Uh, but, but it's a terrible economy. Why? Because, because you have to deal with 14 choices at the beginning of your turn. I especially want there to be only one word on the green cards. Quite often, both words were related to each other in a way that didn't require them to be there. And when they weren't related to each other, there was sort of no sense of why those words were related. Selinker was going on about the invertible cards, saying that it doubled the amount of choices you had to make in your hand from seven to 14. I disagree, I think he's overstating the matter uh, grossly. I think that the decision process in the card is 
your, that you rapidly select the ones that are useful to you out of what's available, and then when you're searching for an alternative to kind of goose it up a bit, uh, then you, that's when you're looking at the invertibles and, uh, and adding them in. Unlike some of the more experienced and uh, honorable judges, I did not uh, mind the double-sided cards. Uh, from a manufacturing standpoint, there are less cards in the game, it's lighter, easier to ship, and I, I thought that some of the terms were different enough where I was able to choose a completely different idea. I don't think it's a design flaw at all. In fact, I think it's a useful mechanic. I just feel like the, the voting mechanism uh, should be more blind. Um, I think everybody should get voted on um, and then flip their cards over. Just because you, you start feeling bad for saying, shut up. <laughs> and, um, and then you, do, you wouldn't want somebody to feel vengeful about that later. The voting mechanic for me was just awkward because I'm not confrontational and I don't like to have any bad will from anybody. So if you vote somebody, um, vote for somebody in a negative way, um, that for me is just really uncomfortable. I'd like to see a completely blind voting mechanic so that if you really did want to put shut up in front of someone, you weren't, um, you know, they, you couldn't be found out, basically. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah. You will not find a more perfect pool uh, of yeah. people to play you know, your game I think that's than true. this contest. But I also think that, you know, it's sort of like when we talk about siblings, like, this is like a very specific group that's well suited to make up those answers, but I think anyone who plays games and sets yeah. it's around yeah. that group, this is an yeah. opportunity, that, that game's an opportunity to like yeah, join in. Because, you know, it's, it's funny to make jokes about card games and board yeah. games, but, you know, why not do that about it? Exactly. Games? Yeah. 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 I will say just as a, as a capturing the moment in history of Kickstarter, yeah, like it doesn't, the, the shut up thing does emotionally speak to a lot of the people's reactions about Kickstarter projects. People get bent out of shape about Kickstarter projects. They're like mad that they exist. Yeah. It, it's also, I worry about the name that it's, 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 a, it's a little meme -y, and I'm just worried that it's like not gonna be specifically memorable in the context of a game. Like it's, it's always gonna be on the tip of your tongue. I hope my friend Luke here has a job at Kickstarter for the next 20 years. Me too. However, <laughs> the whole game is a little meme-y, right? Yeah. I mean, like, like yeah, yeah, I mean, totally. Kickstarter will pro itself will probably be pretty different in, in five years. Absolutely. And so, so I think it really is dangerously short-lived. You know, if I hadn't played this game, I would not back this on Kickstarter. Because what I would see is I would log into the Kickstarter page and I would see, okay, it's some kind of twee parody game, right? They're trying to bank more on the funny haha, -ha, like, oh, look at us, we're parodying Kickstarter. That just wouldn't appeal to me, right? Like those parody games tend to lean much more on their own comedy than the comedy that comes out of the game or the fun that comes out of the game. But having played it, yeah, I, I won't kickstart that game because I know that the core game is actually way stronger than the parody theme makes it seem. It doesn't need the Kickstarter mechanic, that it doesn't use that mechanic pretty well, and the, 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 anything that has to do with the bidding and the Kickstarter thing is, is kind of over-designed and superfluous. I think everybody seemed to have a good time playing, right? I mean, we didn't even talk about that. I was having a good time. I had fun watching you yeah, guys Yeah, and I think we were pretty entertaining, right? Like, like a, as a view this game as somebody else is playing it, this game's that, better that probably speaks well for how well it will demo. Oh, yeah. But I feel strongly that the two things on a card is a good thing because I really don't want to make like, you know, 500 cards. This is plenty. And to be fair, this was the optimal scenario for this game, right? Game designers who work at Kickstarter and like get all of these things, like you cannot get more optimal than this scenario. And are really good at putting words together in yeah. funny ways. Yeah. I, I know, I, I, like, I feel like we brought a lot to this game and it, it was fun to play. It was probably the most fun. The game loop here, like the fundamental thing that you're doing of like making these games and pitching them and asking questions about them, is really fun. There's a great heart to this game. Like this game is this game is awesome. You really can't get a higher seal of approval than the games manager for Kickstarter saying your game about Kickstarter is pretty cool. All right, well let's uh, call him back in and let him know what we thought. Thomas, thank you so much for showing us Shut Up and Take My Money. We uh, genuinely had fun playing your game. I think that with a table full of laughing people, this would be a great game to demo. But we did think that some of the elements, especially the draft, were over-designed. And we thought that the game was fun enough on its own that it would stand up without the super contemporary pop culture references to Kickstarter. So thank you again very much for showing us the game, and we'll see you again at Final Judging. Thank you very much. Uh, it went pretty well. Uh, you know, they had some good things and bad things to say. Uh, they complained about the uh, drafting phase at the start of the game, which they felt was a little too too much, too gamey maybe, for, uh, for
the game itself. So what I'm going to try to do now is uh, streamline right, the whole process, find new ways to, to uh, have the game you know, uh, work right from the start, uh, to basically highlight the most fun part, which is the pitching part of the game. So. Mm -hmm. 